Welcome back to the Greenhouse Weeders. I'm Beth Meyer Shanai with the Oregon Department of Agriculture's Noxious Weed Control Program. And I'm here to bring you a plant, another one, from our educational specimen garden here in Salem's Greenhouse. I have an aquatic species today, um, a very aggressive, um, fast-growing aquatic plant called water primrose, um, often also just called by its genus of Ludwigia. And this one I have no problems growing here in the greenhouse at all. It just is thriving because it has such great um, reproductive strategies and strategies for living in kind of harsh conditions even um, as far as water quality goes. So I decided to get this one going today because it did produce a nice yellow flower, very typical. Um, this particular species of water primrose is um, called Ludwigia hexapetala and um, it has flowers a little bit bigger than the Ludwigia peploides, another um, one that's not uncommon to find in the Willamette River, especially more northward or downstream in the Willamette River. Uh, this one um, is interesting because it has two very different shaped leaves depending on whether it's uh, mature or a juvenile form of the plant. So here you can see pretty linear, long, narrow leaves, a um, little bit of uh, curved at the side and then down to a point um, at the tip. And then down lower in the, in the stem, we can see more of these kind of spatula shaped rounded leaves. So when you first find an invasion of water primrose, that's more like what you're going to find. If there's a little fragment floating down the stream um, and it starts to root or get going, it's going to have these more spatula shaped leaves. Once it roots in some um, substrate or mud or um, soil under the water, then it will get the energy it needs to mature and start to flower where it can also set seed. You can see we've got a five petaled showy yellow flower here. And this plant can grow um, in like kind of floating mats. Um, eventually it will be rooting at the bottom, but most of the, the plant material will be growing up near the top and even three feet or so up above the water. Um, mats so large that even um, some of the people who've worked on treating it have been able to walk out on it with all their safety gear on, of course. Um, and have it support their weight over a column or of 10 feet or so of water. So this grows very dense, takes up a lot of resources, and actually converts habitat that normally would be open water for the types of species that need open water into a completely um, plant-covered surface instead. So it really does a lot to change and damage really sensitive um, ecological habitats that require those open water areas. One of the reasons why this plant especially can um, survive so well is that it has very special roots included that can exchange um, oxygen. So let me see if I can get one of these out and show it to you. It's like a little sponge, a little white sponge. Not every root of the plant is like this, but when it needs to get extra oxygen and the water oxygen is getting low because there's so much decaying and uh, clogged plant material in it, um, it can send up these spongy roots up to the surface and exchange air from the surface into the water or into the plant um, below the water. So it's a pretty amazing strategy and another part of why this plant especially has been so success successful. Um, the, the central Willamette Valley is, is kind of the, the most dense area of this plant, but we are finding it in some of the tributaries to the Willamette and there are some in areas of the Rogue River and some as well over in Eastern Oregon or Central Oregon um, in some ponds. So, Definitely, if you look around in the central Willamette, you're gonna find this kind of all over. But if you find it in any outlying areas, um, it would be a great one to check in with your local ODA noxious weed specialist or a local soil and water conservation district or log on to OregonInvasivesHotline.org and snap a picture and drop a pin on a map where you found it, especially if you're finding it in an area that there doesn't seem to be much around yet. So again, keep your eye out for this ecological game changer. This is 
water primrose. This particular one is Ludwigia hexapetala. Thanks for joining me in the greenhouse today and I will see you next time. Bye-bye everybody.